thank you, Aditya, for joining us for the Success Story series. Uh, so uh, before we get started, if you could just tell us a little bit about your background um, and your work experience kind of a journey. If that yeah, is sure. So I was a captain in the Indian Army. Uh, I'm a military veteran now. I, uh, I, uh, I put in five years of service and uh, I got retired this year in March 2021. And after that, uh, I, uh, Goldman Sachs happened to me and I've been working since, since the month of June. And so I carry about five years of experience uh, in the army and about almost half a year now at Goldman. So that's, uh, that's about, about, uh, about the work experience. And I've specifically been working within the supply chain field and in the operations domain, uh, in the supply chain and operations back in the army where I was more into logistics and uh, now at, at, at Goldman, I'm into a little bit of uh, business analytics and business intelligence and and combining that with operations. Awesome. So, yeah. uh, so tell me a little bit more about, uh, you know, your work in the army more around the supply chain, right? So uh, what are the typical responsibilities that you had and uh, what was the scale of the work that you focused on? Yeah, great question. So uh, the thing is, uh, in army, uh, the uh, the reality of supply chain is a little different. As I now compare it with corporate, we uh, we are responsible for end to end uh, management of supply chain right from uh, uh, right from its procure procurement and negotiation right till uh, right till it's actually till it actually reaches our uh, our posts uh, at our high altitude or wherever we are serving. So uh, managing that for um, for uh, a total of 700 men, which form part of my battalion, it's like a big process and a lot of uh, a lot of things uh, are involved in it. And mostly it's 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 in a conventional and, uh, and in a traditional form of a fashion, wherein you know we work on spreadsheets, we we manage things on more on telephonic conversation than on phone calls, and uh, that's how the entire process is. So. Uh, there's a lot of delegation that happens to uh, to the way I used to delegate my, uh, a lot of other a lot of work to my men who were, who were to other junior logisticians and that's how I used to collect a lot of data and every time every quarter every month the scale used to change and so managing the entire big workflow was uh, was part of what I usually did. So, and if you ask me on numbers, uh, I'll not be able to give you a very good figure, but um, but the number was quite huge because it not, not only included things like ration, ammunition, it also included weapons, it also included uh, hefty vehicles and uh, inventory. So, yeah, the scale was quite large. If I could, if I could answer that. Right. Interesting. And, uh, you know, it uh, it's also very unlike the corporate supply chain where, uh, there's also difficult weather conditions and all that also comes into play there. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, so that's what I I, uh, I keep telling this, like uh, when we were, when I was posted in the high, I've been posted both at the high altitude and in the desert sector. So I've kind of seen weather ranging from both minus 30 to positive 50 degrees. So in both kinds of terrains, it's very difficult to actually uh, get the supply chain moving. And it, and it usually happens that the supply chain fetching up the, Fetching up the supply chain essentials right to the top uh, in the high altitude, it's 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 quite a lot of problem. You need to you need to lies up with uh, with the civil folks there, with the with the men of the soil who can actually with the porters. Then you need, I mean, there's a lot that goes into how the final material reaches your posts. So it can be you know it can be tiresome and it can be very difficult to sometimes manage manage a lot of critical situations. Yeah. Interesting. Kind of so. Uh, uh, when was this thought of, uh, you know, moving uh, out of the army life and uh, looking at doing a master's, uh, especially in supply chain come to your mind and uh, what was the thought process behind it for you? Yeah, so uh, I was more into, like I mentioned, uh, into conventional supply chain and uh, and we follow the archaic model, which is which is not very much driven by uh, by what I now feel should be driven by by data and by data driven decisions and by analytics. So after uh, I had a good, I felt I had a good grip on 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 the essentials of of supply chain and operations. And then now that 
violet gold when i'm again combining this with a lot of uh, data driven knowledge is when i felt i needed uh, a formal education a formal masters before i could actually you know solidify and and uh, conceptualize my knowledge on the subject so uh, because i'm like uh, i have understood supply chain in a field which in wherein uh, you know i've seen a lot of dots i had a, i have a breadth understanding of supply chain but i thought i also need to go a little more deeper into this so to connect those dots and to go deeper is where i felt i a proper formal masters would make more sense and plus at about 5 6 years of service uh, of work experiences when i felt i'm just at the at the sweet spot to you know uh, go and get a masters so, right yeah. right so um, always when you start off the masters obviously these standardized tests like gmat and gre come into place right so uh, mm-hmm. with your work uh, with the kind of environment uh, you were working also and the kind of responsibilities that you had um how did you manage that and what were your typical challenges when it, when you went through that process of taking your gmat i think the typical challenges i would say i think mostly everyone faces it because it's not something you can prepare with uh, while giving up your uh, your your work or something you have to prepare it alongside your work so that was again the strategy for me i gave in myself 2 to 3 months to to get the ball rolling and to start off with my preparations uh juggled a bit here and there finally got uh, got myself uh, focused on the gmat club and that's how i i prepared mostly so uh, it was about 3 months journey uh, but it was a little more difficult for me because uh, getting out the right time and uh, you know dedicating the correct slot uh, like like someone would before before office or after office in corporate is not what uh, uh, I, i could i could utilize because we in the army were uh, were studying and we were on the job 24/7 around the clock so it was difficult sometimes to manage like we didn't we do not have we did not have typical uh, weekends uh, that that generally uh, people have because i was in the field my last posting was in field so there is no concept of having weekends so uh, managing that was a little difficult and i would say for me it was personally a little more difficult because uh, just towards the end of when i scheduled the slot for my gmat uh my father uh, expired because uh, he got covid and so that was a little uh, that was a little thing which i did not anticipate or expect and so that's how it it, it became a little more difficult to me right. than it already was right so um, more from the planning perspective right so you applied this year so when did you start preparing for your gmat uh i I I started preparing somewhere around December or January. Uh, I I think I started more preparing by the time it was January this year. So by January I started off. Um, I was just collecting material here and there, left and right, and uh, I was all lost in the in the jungle of the internet and of Gmat. So January is when I started. Finally, uh, got help from a few friends who were in the corporate. They told me stick to Gmat Club. and uh, that's how that's how it all started right. Out. right i remember talking to you and uh, you know i i i indeed feel that uh, it was a very tough situation for you uh, and uh, you know obviously uh, you made sure you uh, kept your focus on and you know moved on to your next step which is focusing on applying right so uh, before that question on the application part i wanted to ask you one question is typically when people move from army to corporate uh, they either feel a need to do a, a masters or an mba or anything to make that transition because it's not really easy how did goldman sachs happen to you and uh, you know uh, if you could give us some information around that aspect also yeah good question so actually that is the the journey that most veterans follow uh, as i'm in touch with them now uh that was also my plan of action but uh, again uh, so it was more around how i got released uh, from the service is uh, i'll tell you about the timeline is what decided that i probably have to get some exposure in corporate also i'll just i'll just talk about that the thing is uh, uh my resignation was not uh, from the army my, my premature retirement did not get uh, sanctioned by the uh, by the time i wanted it to there was a lot of uh, nuances within it and there was a lot of back and forth going on so i really could not ascertain my own time of getting released uh, it happened to me very all of a sudden in january 
and so i i was by that time i just started juggling with my gmat preparations so i really could not see my my application going even by round 3 of of this particular year that is when i thought that if i am applying uh, this year in september that is going next year september to um, to majorly to most schools is when i'll probably have a job gap of one one and a half years something which i could not uh, something which is which does not look good on your resume and uh, so that's when i just started uh, that's when i uh, came to a mind frame that you know i actually have to get some work experience and it's and it's always a good thing and why not stick to the conventional plan of uh, of doing an mba or a masters and then getting into corporate let's get our hand, our hands dirty initially so that's when the job and started and uh, i mean my linkedin profile and uh, the first thing was uh, the goldman sachs uh, there's a there's a veteran internship program that comes to you so it goes goes to about four or five rounds of rounds of interviews and then there's an internship if you convert it then they hire you as an ft as a full time employee so i applied for that so uh, i i i somehow got got selected uh, with their interviews and then a few projects came my way in the internship i i kind of converted them and that's how they they hired me as a as an ft so that long story short yeah right and uh, i remember reading about it. it's quite a competitive uh, kind of a program and also the transition from army to a complete corporate culture how difficult has it been for you and how challenging has it been for you uh it's been quite challenging in fact uh, i'll uh, i'll be very honest and candid here uh, the way we work in the army is is that it's a completely hierarchical you know fashion in which we work and there are channels of command and we follow strict hierarchy within the army strict channels of reporting and speaking we don't speak a lot we we are more of yes and no and uh, we get we get orders we disseminate them uh, we get the feedback we get the work done we do the reporting up so that's how the thing flows and but but in corporate it's more of a i felt it's more of a flat kind of a tragic uh, kind of a culture and it's a, it's a it's a very vibrant culture here in corporate so like the first thing i started calling my manager by by uh, referring her to ma'am i st- i think mr ikla ma'am i still call you ma'am only that's the habit but then she told me no is it okay you can call me by my name is it okay if i don't call you sir because uh, you are an officer in the army so i told her no let's let's follow the gs culture let's follow the goldman sachs culture you can call me by my name and that's how it all started but i did initially find a lot of difficulty because the way i used to uh, ask my analysts and senior analysts to get to do do a particular work was was very different i used to i used to kind of almost order them that you know i want this by this time by this time but then i realized that there's a lot more flexibility that is that is permissible in corporate than it was in the army and uh, uh, but but we were assigned with buddies uh, within goldman and uh, i could take these things up with my buddy when i realized that probably that was not the very correct way or the best way to do it so my mentor keep on mentoring me the buddy keep on kept on man- uh, me- mentoring me so uh, i would say that way goldman is very good uh, it kind of gave me a good a good firm base to actually establish uh, you know the way i communicate but then the business world i i would say is is completely different from how we work uh, in the army so there's a lot of there's a big transition gap uh, you know that is there and that needs to be bridged so there has to be a lot of hard work that has to go in from from a veteran i'm sure i'm sure but definitely the the leadership style and the way of working and then the problem solving aspect of it uh that thing always helps you know the the never give up uh, attitude and the never back down attitude that always helps so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good and a meaningful and a learning journey but uh, be prepared for obstacles also that's what i say yeah, yeah. so yeah i i mean amazing because it's completely two different worlds uh, for you and uh, i think uh, it's challenging at every step uh, right from uh, the behavioral aspect also from the process aspect also from uh, the goals aspect uh, and you know even in terms of Uh, how your kpis and metrics might be set for you right uh, i think it's a lot more maybe defined in corporate or uh, or otherwise I, i'm not sure you know what do you think how how, how does that work um it's it's uh, i would say it's a little different from uh, how it was uh, you know in military or how i was uh, how i actually saw it um it's it's like um more 
incorporate uh, or at least in gs culture you can uh, you can come back to things you can you can you know you can prioritize few things over few others and uh, and it's not a very robust and uh, and it's not very robust and farm on uh, on if we have to get something out uh, of the day um, and you know there's a lot of flexibility around but uh, but that was not the case in army so i was you know uh, i was a person who always used to work way before deadlines and finish off my work and that way and that's how i expected my juniors also to be at goldman but then slowly and steadily i realized that's not how things are few things can be prioritized over others and that's how and then yeah. but i'm still in the learning curve it's not like i've i've kind of learned everything i still learn everything uh, every day i i i learn some of the other thing new so it's it's just always in the learning curve right uh coming to the whole application process right so how did you go about selecting the kind of programs you wanted to apply to uh, i remember you were pretty sure that us was the geography that you wanted to apply to for personal as well as professional reasons um so how did you go through the whole process of selecting schools and what were the key things that you had in mind when you selected the schools yeah uh, so uh, i kept geography in mind and uh, that's how around that i uh, i planned my b school applications so uh, the geography i decided was was united states primarily because uh, i think I, i mentioned this to you my fiance also intends to come to the united states and uh, we do not have since since she is in the medical field we do not have much options around or maybe we have options around canada and australia or other such english countries but maybe we didn't explore them uh we found uh, us to be a better uh, fit so since she would be migrating there it's why i felt i also uh, sh- should be should be coming there and then i also uh, enlisted a, a few programs and do my own uh, due diligence on on canadian programs around supply chain and on us and on uh, australia uh, supply chain programs and with all due respect i i personally felt uh, though all the programs are equally good but i felt i had more of an inclination towards the us programs again that was the second point and uh, around selecting geography specifically within the united states uh, mostly uh, i ke- i ha- i had a lot of friends who i I've, i've been to the united states prior on on a vacation so i've i met a lot of my friends who've been to these particular universities uh, so i i i chopped out those universities for me wherein my my schools my friends were still there and they could help me out and wherein i could actually get a good backdrop of how the school is how the university is how the program is and i could connect with a lot of uh, with a lot of other students also prospective students and with also with ex students mm-hmm. who are now into the job industry within the united states so that's how i kind of you know conceptualized the whole thing and uh, got my b school selected and of course uh, consulted you as well uh, the the crack over team also mm-hmm. and uh, Uh, got a lot of deep insights you know around how to go about uh, doing the selection and everything so i don't know sh- ma'am if you want me to enlist the universities that i selected or let's uh, uh, we can yeah. i'll i'll ask you questions yeah so uh, <clears throat> more around uh, how difficult or easy was the application process for you uh, i <laughs> i think the application process to nowadays with the kind of information that's flowing it's difficult to you know uh, even find out where to start from and uh, where to get the correct information from so finding actually b schools is, could be a little tough and tedious because you have a lot of them going on and then you do not know about how the programs are and what kind of flexibility they provide how they are within how they are so uh, with a good kind of mentor or a consultant expert you always have that uh, you know flexibility to understand programs better and who have uh, you know poured in their students prior so uh, to 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 those b schools so that's why i thought i i could fetch a lot of help from crack wobble because understanding b school at least from from someone who's coming from the from his last field course coaching just diving into the internet and searching on google becomes very very difficult so i thought i should, i i really needed help so i thought i'll i'll, I'll get help and uh, yeah, yeah I, now i know i made the right decision so. i'm so glad we we could be part of your journey uh, so more around uh, uh, i think how, how did the whole process go so once you uh, apply to how many schools did you apply to in total more from a number perspective uh i applied to five business schools 
so I'll, I'll just tell you the problem with me applying to schools was specifically because there are few schools who accept a four years bachelor's mm-hmm. and uh, that's why I could not apply to a lot of B schools like Ross and all because uh, they did not they I spoke to their admission committee also kind of requested also that I carry a three years bachelor's and that's not something I chose for me that's something the Indian Army chose for me I did a three years you know bachelor's in computer science and then I've done a one year postgraduate can you not compile it and you know uh let that be a four year you know uh, whatever so but then they did not agree to it is why my scope of uh, schools kind of got restricted but even with the kind of schools who did accept this three plus one year of degree of mine uh i applied to i mean i took a lot of help from crack verbal finally enlisted the the schools for myself so i applied to five schools overall okay okay and uh, how did this uh, so once you submit the application did you have an interview process how did that go uh yeah so i think there's a i feel um, and of course you can correct me ma'am here but i feel there's a change of culture within b schools nowadays it's less of a live interview i mean i think i've only had live i had live interview interviews with two of the schools but it's more of a watch uh, it's more of a uh, i'm sorry by, by live interview i meant a virtual interview only but uh, but you know like one on one fashion the way we are interacting it's more of they have they have set up pre uh, pre decided questions for you or or maybe the uh, the software algorithm works on based on what you choose based on which point you choose then a question comes to you one by one so generally a series of 3 to 5 questions for most business schools which are pre decided and then they get video recorded and that's how the 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 videos go to them so that was how how the interview uh, interview process went for me so other than that the interview process was uh, other than that the application process was same like two to three letter of recommendations then the sop essays whatever and then filling in your resume those were the two kind of uh, the two kind of ways uh, interviews were scheduled for me so yeah right uh, from the uh, virtual interview part right so w- what do you think were uh, they focusing on did they focus a lot on your background and uh, trying to understand why you were looking at a masters what kind of questions did they actually ask during the interview process yeah that's a great question actually i saw a diverse kind of uh, you know uh, a diverse way of the way uh, the questions came 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 to me uh, most of them were around initial questions are usually around why why you decided the the b school what is it that you like about their particular school they want to know that and why have you chosen the program and then it kind of touches base with with the kind of work experience that you carry and how you have to basically tell them your story and of how of how your prior work experience or your prior degree uh you know amalgamates with the course that you are intending and then how is it that you see yourself in your short and long term goals if you have that particular entire story if you know uh, uh why is it that if you if you can align those points that's what the school is looking for primarily other than that they usually i think they they keep your resume open and they ask you questions based on your resume mm-hmm. that was the second thing but uh, for my interview i i also this time saw a few you know graduate assistants taking me uh, taking my interview and i i think this would be part of their internship or something mm-hmm. so a few of them came me with a with a long list of questions and then they fired it away to me one by one by one so this i believe was more part of uh, part of i think that person was was from hr and she was doing her graduate uh, graduate uh, assistantship is why it, uh, she she took that interview for me but for most of the pre recorded video interviews the questions were around the same thing why you want to uh, or see this or why you want to do this particular program why at yeah why at this particular time in your life what is it that you want to achieve out of it how do you see yourself in in long term and in short term what kind of experience you carry so it's the history the present and the future is what is what they are asking yeah awesome 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 so how many did you convert in final i have just received uh, 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 notifications from two b schools mm-hmm. i i applied to five uh, i have just received notifications from two uh, from wisconsin i have received wisconsin school of school of business i have received uh, one uh, admit and the second one i have received from university of maryland uh with that i received a 10 10000 uh, scholarship and uh, they named me a terpen scholar so those are the two i have received the rest of them are giving out their notifications by by mid of january uh mm-hmm. the three schools are the radgos business school uh, the supply chain analytics program the foster business school mass uh, supply chain program and uh, and the carlsons business school that's uh, university of minnesota right 
right and uh, as i'm hoping i think my my interviews have gone pretty well i'm hoping to convert in i i think hopefully in all in all three of them awesome so awesome. yeah that's something to wait for <laughs> every day in the morning i get up i have stopped take, checking my whatsapp first i first check my emails now <laughs> i know i know and i think this is the time of the year where most of the people applying uh, are going through the same kind of <laughs> process <laughs> where they check their emails so uh, congratulations aditya i'm so happy for you uh, i know it was a tough year uh, for you at the same time uh, you know you made sure that uh, you kept your focus uh, you know you had with all the things that you had to juggle uh, personally emotionally professionally Uh, you did awesome and you're doing awesome at goldman sachs too uh, you know putting in a lot of hard work we all know how uh, you know it is at goldman sachs so uh, you're putting in a lot of hard work i know it, you know even working with you i remember how uh, important it was uh, more from a timeline perspective uh, initially we had a very short timeline and then you realized there's a lot more hard work required on this essays and then juggling with goldman sachs also uh so uh, i really really appreciate uh, the kind of hard work you put in for the whole process uh, and uh, i'm so fortunate that i got to work with you uh, thank you so much and uh, thank you for trusting crackable and uh, congratulations again i hope uh, you convert all the five schools and then you know you have a good problem to have where uh, you just have to choose uh, which one to finally uh, you know <laughs> finally... i am I am again going to bother you for that. <laughs> yeah. I will again have to bother you for that, ma'am. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. And, and thank you, thank you so much. It wouldn't have been possible if it wouldn't have been for you know for Crack Purple and for all the help and support and guidance that I have received from you all. So I really appreciate your help and your time also because I know this is not just a, not just it's not just a. Uh, Uh, a period uh, in the year which is for students but it's also for the consulting team wherein you have so many students pouring in and then to you know kind of help out every student and every and mentor every single application it can be a little tedious and tough but uh, for me it, it went out pretty well so and pretty flawless so so thank you so much i'm so glad i'm so glad thank you so much aditya and thank you for giving me time on a saturday morning i know you have a very hectic day Uh, all the best and uh, yes i uh, you know reach out to me whenever uh, and uh, you know we will make sure that we help you with the next steps too yeah sure thank you any time the pleasure is all mine all right thank you so much thank you thank you so much take care bye bye mm-hmm.